What's up, everybody? Mark from the Nerd Herders here, doing a first impression on The Stanley Parable. I know nothing about this game. I barely even heard anything about this game. A friend from work was telling me about it. It sounds pretty weird, so I figured I'd give it a shot, and I'm all alone, and, and so I figured, you know, haven't done a first impression in a while, let's go ahead and do one, so let's just jump right into it, and I'll uh, tell you what I think of this game. It's... Yeah, weird. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. This looks like a, he sat at his desk like in a Pixar room 427 movie. and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-making, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Okay. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Yeah, it's called a never zombie in all apocalypse. Years of the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, so I get to play. Feels very half lifey for sure. Um, do I get to go through? No. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so this guy talks the entire time. Oh! No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Yeah! Hope you didn't have any important documents you needed. <laughs> okay... The ocean. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> okay, so I can already tell it's a breaking the fourth wall game. He's making comments about the fact that I'm trying all the doors and uh, touching all the computers. That's uh, well done. All right, let's continue. Oh. See if I can piss this guy off. Quit touching! When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know what to do. Do I, like, do my first playthrough as, like, an obedient... Okay, I'll do what you tell me to do, or do I just, like, completely ignore everything he tells me to do and do the opposite? We'll, we'll be obedient. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Alright. Um, room closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hey, who am I to argue? Um, executive bathroom. Maybe that's his office. I don't figure out the controls. There seems like there's not very many walking and moving <laughs> and touching stuff. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, 
Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held Never from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Okay. Well, I don't see a key pin. Oh, duh. Uh, wait, 2845? Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Sure. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Going down. Well, you can tell it's a Valve game. I'm on an elevator and it's loading. <laughs> we all know the elevators are. Especially since I believe this game uses the source engine that Portal 2 uses. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now? when for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. Okay, this narrator's already used the word peculiar. Well, Stanley walked straight ahead times. through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Okay. It's really dark in here. What's this? I push? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Yeah, we got the strength to find out. Uh, security cameras? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the God building, damn. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? It's hard to, it's hard to like talk and comment on what's happening because this guy never stops talking. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Did I beat the game? and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, 
Even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to do. <coughs> Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. don't even know. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the first impression there. My first impression is, what the hell did I just play? Okay, so I beat the game in about 10 minutes following the orders of the guy. So, I mean, I'm not stupid. I get what I'm supposed to do. I get that I'm, uh, I get that I'm supposed to, uh, you know, not you, my my whole character's point is that he does nothing but blindly follow orders. Obviously, because these mind controls we already see, and I, I get the point is that I'm supposed to not follow these orders, and I'm supposed to, if he says go through the left door, I was supposed to go through the right door. If he says go upstairs, I'm supposed to go downstairs. The whole point is that I'm supposed to uh, uh, not follow rules anymore, and, and because he mentions uh, about me. Uh, having my own train of thought, not having to listen to what people or, you know, mind control tells me to do. So I get it. I just, it's really awesome that it's like I beat the game in 10 minutes. Uh, obviously, I didn't beat anything because I'm, I'm back, um, back to the beginning. But, uh, so, um, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably go through the game and check it out. And I'll probably do a marks for marks on it. So, because <laughs> I, I, it's, it's hard because I was going to do a, a first impression and, and talk and stuff like that. But the guy never stops talking. And I don't want people to watch and, and have to hear me talking over somebody else. Or maybe they want to hear what the guy says. You know, that's the joy of the game, I think, is supposed to be able to, supposed to be able to hear what that guy is saying. Um, so, yeah, I'll play the game some more and maybe do a Marks and Marks on it. Um, but un until that happens, I hope you enjoyed this very, very fast first impressions. And uh, I never thought a first impressions would lead to me ending the game already. Um, it's, pretty <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, so, until next time, you know, watch Marks from Marks. Watch our other videos on www.youtube.com slash n3earners. Thank you.